Let's go back to five years ago. Did we really imagine we'd one day get to really explore an industrial Yukuminopolis such as our corp? Wander through the clouds of Crusader in the middle of a city in the clouds? Or risk freezing to death in the midst of a blizzard on Microtech? Well, these were challenges that have been overcome by Cloud Imperial Games' talented developers, and as impressive as these results may look today in 2022, you, the, you are about to see that they are but a preview of brand new challenges that will too push Star Citizen's planetary tech to new heights. Hi everyone, it's the Eradicator, and in today's video, we will take a look at the future planets that will once again prove to be particularly challenging to make for Star Citizen's engineers and artists, with a selection of 5 particular cases that will show about that the wonderful planets that we can already explore in the game are but a foreshadowing of what we'll get to explore in a more or less distant future. We'll start with Helios 2, also known as Tangaroa. This planet has always been high on my wishlist because it's an ocean world and I've always been fascinated by such worlds in sci-fi, but also because of the incredible lore behind it that will for sure give Star Citizen's planetary tech team members a few headaches. First, they will have to find a way to almost entirely cover the surface with water, which is not something we have in the game right now. Next, they will have to create a moon that will have to be much closer to the planet than anything we've seen in the game so far, which will look spectacular, but as a result, and this is where lies the tech challenge here, the planet will feature underground volcanoes that will trigger gigantic tidal waves that will put everybody at, everybody's lives at risk, at least anybody who lives on the surface. The planet will also feature one landing zone, Mariana, or Shore Break, that will be located near the pole and will cover every bit of available landmass and will even expand on the sea. Tangaroa, by its nature, is definitely going to be an ex incredibly exciting place to visit and will once again be a milestone in the video game industry. We will then move to a system that you all know, and that is the Lear system, and particularly Lear 3, which we saw in the 2016 Gamescom demo. You know, the one with the infamous sandworm. It's also the location of the Star Marine map, The Good Doctor. The planet is planned to feature multiple biomes, including desert, tundra, mountain, ocean, oasis, sandstone, and desert trees. What I believe will be difficult for the developers will of course be the creation of the sandworms, which backers are excited about. Those sand wards will leave on the ground and will sporadically come to the surface to attack settlements or players. Will the sand worms be found all over the planet, or will they stick to certain areas, like the ones that have sand? Uh, we don't know. Also, how will they move on the ground? Will there be networks of caves that only the worms will take, which will make them move on the ground and then appear to the surface, or will they appear through specific spawn lockers, a little bit like NPCs do when we arrive at certain locations or when we start a mission? That remains to be seen, but given their size and dangerosity, there is no doubt that once they are in the game for real, it is definitely going to be a feature that a lot of people will talk about, given that encountering such worms is a wet dream for a lot of fans of the Dune series out there. The next planet that I believe will be a challenge will be Lorona. Lorona is located in a Banshee system, and the Banshee star is an extremely dangerous blue-white pulsar that emits devastating rays that can obliterate any life form that it touches. That is why the people of planet Lorona, which is the third planet of the system, live on the ground in a complex system of caves that interconnect. Lorona is an important mining hub that includes all kinds of ore, from the most precious ones to the most common ones. Because of how successful the mining industry has been, the planet's underground landing zone, Kesseli, is one of the largest underground cities in the known universe, and I think that now you understand where the challenge will be. It has already taken CIG a lot of time to create caves, and they are still at it, working hard to produce new types of caves such as icy or sandy caves, but even the largest of these will be dwarfed by the immense size of the caves that will contain the planet's human activities. And I really believe that those giant underground cities will be beyond anything we've seen and definitely will be a must-see for any Star Citizen player if CIG developers manage to pull it off and produce a visually satisfying landing zone. Next is what I believe will be the mother of all terrestrial planets, Terra. It's still speculation at this stage, but I believe that Terra will be the first terrestrial planet produced by Cloud Imperial Games, and that it will be released after the Paro and the Nyx systems are done, and in, that in fact, they have already secretly working on it. 
We already know for a fact that they have started working on some of the fauna that will be populating the planet in the form of the Terra cows. Terra is going to include all kinds of biomes you would expect to see on Earth and other Earth-like planets, including the one I will mention at the end, which is already going to make it very different from uh, any other planets released before, since they either, they either have one biome like Arcorp or various biomes that still look like one another. The planet will also feature three major landing zones, which is not something we've seen in the game before, which also indicates that a huge amount of man-hours will be spent for the creation of the planet, as Star Citizen's landing zones are man-made with very little procedural generation. These include Prime, the capital, Quasi, which will be more of a touristic location, and New Austin, which will be the planet's industrial hub. The planet also features a moon in close orbit called Eda, which should create a large tidal effect that will affect the planet's coastline. This will remain, uh, will this remain in the lore or will this be a testbed for Tangara? Well, that still remains to be seen. The last planet that we'll be talking about today is the second planet of the Croshaw system called Angeli. This planet is an Earth-like planet similar to how Earth was before mankind existed. And I believe that this planet will be made after Terra, because once Terra will be made, it should be easier and faster for the developers at Cloud Imperial Games to create terrestrial planets. However, what will make Angeli challenging will be its earthquakes, which apparently are quite frequent, as the planet is known to feature a seismic hazard. It is also said that one day, there will be a huge earthquake that will shake the surface of the planet, and it would potentially be devastating. I think that it will be an awesome dynamic event in which players uh, would then have to ship medical supplies and all kinds of construction materials to help the local population, but I digress here. The challenge will of course to make these earthquakes failed by players. Maybe these will damage the ships that will land on the surface? Or perhaps items could fall on players, potentially injuring them. And I think that it could be fun, you know? I also think that uh, we could imagine some kind of alerts that players would be uh, would be given to players, and which would tell players if an earthquake is about to happen, a little bit like the ones that we have where I live in Taiwan, so that players who are on a ship, for example, could take off and wait until the quake is over. Anyway, as you can see, we are still far from reaching new technical breakthroughs, there are still plenty of new types of planets and situations the developers have to work on in the future, and given Star Citizen's diverse planet roster, at least in its lore, I believe that going to each of these is going to be a novelty and an experience in itself, just like it currently is when you travel to Microtech, R-Corp or Crusader. But let me know in the comment section down below, guys, is there another planet that you think will be challenging for the developers to create? Are you a Star Citizen developer, perhaps? If so, what planet do you think will be the biggest challenge for you? Let me know in the comment section down below. And now, it's giveaway time. If you subscribe to the channel and answer the question I just asked, then you can win a MISC Hall A. It is being given by the amazing Dr. Forbin, and it will be a fine addition to your fleet, especially when the cargo refactor will come with Alpha 3.18. As always, I wanted to thank my Patreons and channel members for their support, and if you too want to support the channel, you'll have access to exclusive videos that I make every week, and our private Discord channel, which is where we have another giveaway, and this month, it's a Mule and Cutlass pack with LTI. A big thanks to Dr. Fobin, Geek Citizen, Captain Snake, Eric Ohm, and the Digidon. It's the Eradicator. Have a great day. I will see you guys later.